RF man here. I had uh, some of my viewers after watching my four part video on the Super Heterodyne ask me some questions about AM demodulation. So I decided to make a brief video and just demonstrate how your basic AM demodulation circuit works. So if you remember from the other videos, I showed the super heterodyne block diagram and at the very end after the RF amplifier we had a demodulator or detector sometimes called an envelope detector and then an audio amplifier and a speaker. So today I'm going to focus specifically on the demodulator and audio amplifier. Uh, I'll be using a couple of function generators with a modulated carrier wave so I'll be demonstrating that as we continue with the video. So here's a simple block diagram of an AM demodulator circuit. We basically have a modulated AM signal. AM of course being amplitude modulation and it's this envelope that we're trying to detect with the demodulating circuit. So this is a real high level view. It shows the rectifier and it shows an RC circuit and also a low pass filter and then the recovered information which in our case will just be a one kilohertz tone, single tone. So here's what the schematic looks like. We've got again a modulated signal okay it's an AM signal with a carrier and one tone to modulate the carrier and we have the source resistance would be the 50 ohms of the function generator and then we have a diode detector this is usually a shocky diode or a germanium diode uh, the reason why we use those type of diodes is because they have a much lower voltage drop than a silicone diode and then we have an RC time constant here that's used to capture the the envelope to detect the envelope so let, let's see what that's all about let's see what that does so here's the circuit again now we've got component values I'm using a 1N 914 germanium diode okay and we have our RC time constant C1 is a 0.01 microfarad and R1 is 10k then we have a simple low pass filter which is just another RC circuit and then it's AC coupled to an audio amplifier. Um, what I'm using for my demonstration is an LM386 amplifier. It has an internal gain of 20 and can be modified adding this 10 microfarad capacitor to give it a gain of 200 and then I have it driving a speaker. So this is a basic audio amplifier. An op amp can be used here as well. So let's see what goes on in the circuit. Um, basically, we're showing the carrier wave and we're showing the modulated signal here, which again is just the one kilohertz tone. And during the positive amplitude of the carrier wave, this diode is forward biased. So basically the diode acts as a closed switch and that charges up C1. And then during the negative amplitude of the carrier, okay, this diode is reversed biased. So it acts like an open switch and this capacitor discharges through R1. So what we get here on the envelope is the capacitor charging and discharging. Okay, and that cycle is just repeated. It charges and discharges, charges, discharges. Okay, and gives us the envelope of the carrier wave. So these values are critical. Okay, we have basically a resistor and a capacitor and the charge and discharge time, okay, of the capacitor and that's controlled primarily by the value of capacitance and the resistance. Now, we call that a time constant or tau. So what is one time constant equal? Okay, well basically it's the resistance in ohms times the capacitance in farads. So in our case, 
R1 is 10K, so we have 10,000. And then C1 is a 0.01 microfarad, so that's what it is in farads. And when we multiply that out, we get 0 0.0001 seconds or 100 microseconds. Okay, so that's what our RC time constant is. When this capacitor initially charges and then discharges through the resistor. So what are the requirements? Well, if we take a look, the RC time constant should be greater than the 1 over FC. Okay, uh, 1 over FC in this case is 1 over 5 megahertz, so it's 200 nanoseconds. Okay, and why does the capacitor have to be larger and the resistor to exceed 200 nanoseconds? Because we don't want the capacitor to be discharging all the way, okay? So it needs to be larger than that time constant. If it discharges all the way, this would drop all the way down, and we'd no longer be able to capture this envelope. Now, the same holds true, okay, that RC should be less than 1 divided by the message frequency, which we said was a 1 kilohertz tone, okay? So 1 divided by 1,000 is 1 millisecond, all right? This is so the capacitor charges fully, okay, during and between cycles. So that's why the RC time constant is important. And I'm going to just quickly demonstrate what happens if we use the wrong values, how that affects the envelope, and what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So let's go over to my setup here. I'm using an RF signal generator here. And there's my carrier at approximately five megahertz. And I'm using this function generator with the one tone signal to modulate the carrier wave. Okay, so this is a nice feature included in this signal generator is it has internal modulation and also external modulation. And I decided to use the external modulation because I can control the percentage of modulation a little easier. So what does that look like on the, on the scope? So here I've got it on the analog scope. It's a little easier to look at. On a digital scope, it really depends on the sample rate. But, uh, you know, if I, if I bring out the time base, we can see there's the 5 megahertz carrier wave. And then if we change the time base, we can see the envelope of the carrier wave being modulated with the one tone signal from the second signal generator. So that's what the modulated signal looks like. Now, I'm going to go and move my scope probe to the other side of the diode, which would basically rectify the signal. So we'll go ahead and do that. If you recall the schematic, it's basically the cathode side. Okay. And that's what the rectified signal looks like after the diode. Okay. And then we're gonna go and look at the output after the RC circuit. Okay, and we'll, we'll trigger on that again. Okay. And maybe we'll change the volts per division. Yes, okay. So here we can see that we're doing a very good job of capturing the envelope, demodulating the envelope and we've got a pretty good looking sine wave there. Okay, but what happens if our RC time constant is incorrect? Um, so what I'll do in my circuit here, I'm gonna substitute the R and C, and we can briefly look at what happens when those components are changed and the time constant is too short. Just as, just as an example, okay, so here, you can see 
that it changes the envelope quite a bit. And if I change the time base, we can actually see this is the charging and discharging of the capacitor. So you can see if the capacitance value is too small or the resistance value is too small, it allows the capacitor to discharge too much and we don't capture the edge of the envelope. Now we're, we're discharging further and we're distorting the envelope as you can see there. So let me go ahead and remove those and change those back to the, the correct value. Now here we have the correct value. And if I, if I change the time base, you see we're only capturing the envelope because the capacitor is not discharging too much. So, so that's, that's what it looks like. We've got a pretty good looking sine wave there. Now, I showed again on my schematic here that we're driving this LM386. Okay, so we're gonna switch that on and we're connected to a speaker. So there you can see, or I should say you can hear the one kilohertz tone. And as we increase the modulation, you can hear the tone getting louder. We decrease the modulation, it gets low. You can also put a volume control on these amplifiers on the input side. So on a radio, you'd have an external volume control, but I'm just driving it directly. So that's the demonstration. Again, the critical part here would be the RC time constant that's used. And to make sure that you uh, meet the, the criteria that I had defined on the, on the slide here. As long as you're within that window then you will capture the edge of the envelope and you'll replicate the original audio signal and have a very clean sine wave to drive your audio amplifier. So that's the demonstration. I hope that answers some of the questions I received and I hope it was helpful. RF man.